Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Last week we made a mold so that I could cast these jelly bean crankbaits with the bib in them. And since then, I've been doing a little bit of casting. My goal is to be able to get a few made up so that I can get them painted and then take them fishing like soon. So I have one already poured this evening and let's demold it real quick. Oh yeah, looking good. You can see the Lexan lip in there and pull the slot out. Oh, there it goes. And it's just a matter of cleaning up a little bit of flash. We can get that done pretty quickly. And this one should be ready to paint in a day or so. Now, before I start painting, I just wanted to kind of clear up a couple of things because I know some of you are probably asking yourself, so what's the big benefit of uh, pouring the lure around the bib? Well, the biggest benefit really is having a consistent angle of the bib, both uh, in reference to the dive angle, but also any kind of twist in it because that will destroy a lure and make it impossible to balance. The other question I'm sure some of you might have is that why not just cast the bib out of the resin itself and I do that in fact the mold that I showed in the last video with this mold I cast the bib in place it's got a thicker sort of slot for the bib and that allows it to be heavier and tougher but the drawbacks with that is that whenever you're pouring something that slender you're gonna get bubbles in fact I poured one just so I could show it to you so you can see the bib is poured out of the same resin at the very same time you can see how thin it is it does come out pretty good but the problem is, I don't know if you can see it right there, there's a bubble. Uh, it has a tendency to have all kinds of small problems. Even that one little bubble is going to be problematic to fill and then sand back. So it's really not worth casting it out of the resin. I'm going to have the air conditioning going and the extractor going, so there's going to be a lot of noise. So all you're going to hear is maybe a little bit of background music and some voiceover to explain what I'm doing. I want to use this silvery paint about from the center line up to the top. I'm going to try to keep it off the bottom of the lure. I like using it because I'm going to be using transparent paints, and I find the silver base sort of uh, shines through the paint and helps to sort of combine the colors I'm going to be using. Here I'm using some opaque yellow just to create some rough lateral lines. These will get cleaned up later in the paint job. This is a transparent mid blue and you can see I've already sprayed it side uh, but very lightly and now I'm darkening in the areas I want to highlight with this dark blue here I'm using this transparent orange to give it a little bit of a golden hue along with the silver underneath this will make that blue look a little bit green I'm also adding a little bit of that dark blue just to give it a little more scale effect on top. Now I'm freehanding some strike eyes with opaque black. And I'll use it to create a little bit of a black hood just on top at the head and a bit of pearlescent red on the chin this interference blue is kind of like a top coat that causes a little bit of a color shift and it'll even make the white shift a little bit to blue
silver eyes are a no-brainer on this one. I use this to seal the paint as a mid coat just underneath the clear coat. I like it. Looks pretty nice. It's got a nice little bit of color shift and some nice color blending. All right, let's do a different one. All right, with this one, let's do a speckled perch pattern. I think I'm going to start with silver all over the body and then maybe we'll put some black specks now, maybe a little later. Definitely some blue, some black on top. We'll see. I'm using this blue as a background blue, but I'm trying to leave like a silver mask so I don't get any blue right under the eyes. All right, what do you guys think? Silver? Red looks pretty cool, but I'm not sure it goes. How about gold? I like the gold, but I do think the silver is the way to go. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, I've got them coated with some polyacrylic as just a mid coat, sort of just to seal the paint. And now I'm gonna go ahead and give it a clear coat with UV resin. So as usual, after I coat them, I'll put them in this turner, uh, which doubles as a uh, ultraviolet light chamber. So I usually just let them turn for about five or 10 minutes just to make sure all the bubbles out. And then I'll go ahead and turn the lights on and I'll leave it for about 45 minutes to an hour. It's raining, so it'll probably be more than an hour. And once they're set, I'm gonna put some hooks on them. And then tomorrow morning, we'll drive to the local reservoir and fish these things through the stump fields. See if we can scare up a big bass. So we're out on my lake this morning. Instead of going directly over to Rodman Dam, which I think the water level is super low right now, uh, I thought I'd give this place a shot. It's been really heavily fished lately. So if we strike out here, we'll head to another lake. I'm gonna tie on the shad pattern first.
All right, let's try the dark one. All right, nothing was happening in my lake. So now we're going out the channel here to Big Lake Santa Fe. This lake is probably not much better at giving up fish, but at least if I get hot, I can jump in uh, for a nice swim. This is as good an edge as any to try out. Well, a little bit of frustrating news. My trolling motor is not working. I think uh, the breaker went bad on it. So to keep the engine running and make sure you don't run into trees. Gonna be one of those days. All right, I don't want to lose this thing and it's not coming off, so I'm going in the water. Hopefully I can get down in there and find it and then get back on the boat. All right, I've got the rod in the rod holder and I've got it tensioned so that I can follow the line to the lure. At this point, it feels like I broke the line. But nope, there she is. Could be worse, could be raining. I might have to bail. I don't feel like getting hit by lightning. Let's run to the other end of the lake. I'm gonna go all the way to the north. Maybe we'll escape this stuff. Second thought, look at that line. That's coming this way. I think I'm just gonna have to call it a day. We'll get to it another day. Well, things went from bad to worse. I thought it was just a breaker, but it isn't. It's the control board. It smells like burnt tires. I've ordered one, but it'll be a, probably a few days before it gets here. So I'm going to give uh, my lake another try. And if we don't catch anything there, we'll have to break out the kayaks. <laughs> All right, it rained all weekend. Today is Tuesday and this is after work, trying to get in a little bit of fishing uh, in between thunderstorms. So as long as it's not lightning out, I'm cool. Actually, this is pretty good weather uh, for casting square bills. I kind of like it when it's a little overcast. Maybe not like this, but uh, a little overcast is good. Let's start out with the darker of the two. I'm using my chrome reel, maybe we'll get some luck. This guy's got brush piles all around his dock, so I'll probably get snagged. Pretty sure that's a fish. 
<laughs> Maybe I'm snagged. <laughs> Man, that felt like fish so much. That is a fish. Little guy. It's not too small. giant but he's a fish he was well hooked he wasn't coming off there he goes all right not a big guy about a pound and a quarter I'm gonna call it before the next round of rainstorm. Not exactly an epic fishing trip. Can't say that I didn't give it a shot. So thanks to everyone who hung in there and watched the video all the way to now. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little slideshow at the end here so you can see what they actually look like up close. And I'll see all of y'all on the next video Friday.